preview time. Daggy with you. New channel, same beaver, leaving me an alert to the last minute of midweek preview. But uh, we've got Randwick and the Hillside to get stuck into this afternoon. Uh, just quickly, thanks to everyone that jumped on the new channel over the last uh, few days. Uh, kicking that off okay. We're going to obviously build towards the Autumn Carnival and hopefully have a few exciting announcements in the meantime. So stay tuned for that and uh, hopefully some news around the website and some other things going on there. Uh, but we kick off at the Kenzo track where we are on a good track or soft drying out track here. There's rain forecast later this afternoon, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, forecast soft, I'm not too worried about that. Should play fine as Kenzo tends to do. Uh, Rail in the true, if I didn't mention that. Uh, on pace early, down the outside by the end of the day, I suggest would be the uh, usual business there. We kick off with a 1,000 metre maiden for the three-year-olds. Interesting uh, clash to start the day with a couple of first starters. I'm going to put Call Me Girl Gorgeous on top for David Fife. I love the way it's attacked the line. Uh, both its starts, uh, trials to date, a um, bit of cut out of the ground for a deep field should suit. Uh, so it goes on top from Luna Field, who is also a deep field, but interesting what's happened with this couple of preparations where it's been revved up in just about every trial. I suggest probably looking to sell uh, was the plan a long way through, but has responded in all those trials. I think what you've seen at the trials is what it's got to offer. Might well be enough. Uh, I think they can fight it out uh, of the race brigade. I couldn't come up with a great deal else. The second race, uh, 400 metre maiden. Uh, the market's singled in on the obvious here in pure alpha. I thought it picked itself essentially. Uh, form out of that race has been franked on debut there behind the Gerald Ryan Schnitzel Colt. Franz uh, Joseph. Uh, big gap back to third that day on Boxing Day. Rolls forward for J-Mac. Uh, who's going to beat it? I thought the first starter from uh, uh, yeah, the Quinton stable here, Generous Harry, might run well, actually, at a, at a big price uh, away from uh, the rest of the exposed form. Race three, 1,150-metre maiden as well. Just looking through the scratchings. Uh, Mark, it looks right again here. Speed personified, hard to beat. Good day, Book Canterbury. Comes to Kenzo, inside gate for J-Mac. Should sit further forward. That'll suit. Uh, we'll stalk the stable, mate. I think they'll run one too. Speed personified from Raven's Claw in race number three. The fourth is a 15 at 50 benchmark, 64. Nana's Wish again picks itself. Don't want to necessarily be, you know, charging into this $2.30 thing because it does need to actually get a win on the board. Uh, but it was a nice resumption there uh, behind Miss Fabergé, who we'll get to soon. Gate one should be further forward. That's Jason Collett's um, favourite spot to be. Uh, and I'm going to put it on top from Gold Patton, who snagged back at Canterbury last time out. I think Kenzo may suit better. I don't think Nash will be as negative if it gets a good run at 10 bucks. Can fight at the finish. And very interesting to see how the two Waller runners down the bottom here stack up at Metro level. Ring me up and Love Child both. Done some okay things out wide. Now come to town. Excuse me. Race five. Interesting race here, which is a benchmark 72, 1400 metres. Uh, Miss Fabergé, I just mentioned, very good Boxing Day flying this prep, but uh, gave that previous horse I mentioned a start in the beating last time out. I oh, thought it was pretty impressive. I'm going to go with it again from Castilian, who third up, blinkers on to a bigger track, Tyler Schiller, uh, quick backup. All tick, 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 tick for Joe Pride to have this horse ready to go. It's a horse I had a bit of an opinion of um, when it was in its previous life without necessarily getting a lot of jobs done or having a, um, the best of luck. Uh, I think this would be the race that they've decided to flip the switch and see what's really here. Uh, I think they fight it out at the current market. I will back both each way and see what we can get out of it. Um, Vinny Spirit doesn't particularly like... It likes being in front for a while, just not the last 200 metres of any race it seems to be in. So I think it'll get run down again. The six is an 1,800-metre benchmark, 72. Uh, and when in doubt, just send Timpanus back to Kenzo. Back in distance, the last couple, now back up. Uh, comes back to its favourite track, where it won very impressively early this prep. Uh, go time again. It was 7.50 when I did the form. Obviously, we've lost a few to scratchings, but looks a good play here for me, a safe play, if nothing else. Here, uh, main danger, Edmund, who's been putting together a good campaign. Nash uh, sticks from the Canterbury run. It'll run in the top three again. 
Much else you want to talk about? Not particularly. The last is an 1100 metre benchmark 64, which was on paper was an absolute cracker. Uh, trainers have decided to not make it so. I'm left with Black Cloud on top. Joe Pride off a nice win. I uh, don't know if it's chased everyone away or whether most of those are being saved for Saturday or Friday night or any of the other racing this week, but uh, very obvious now, Black Cloud on top and probably one of the better bets on the day now. Uh, my best, for show us your tips. We'll make it race two, number five, pure alpha, but now race seven, number 12 is going to be very hard to beat. Value on the card, uh, yeah, let's say race five, number five, Castilian, um, ready to go there on uh, I think what would be a productive day at the Kenzo track. We head down to the Sandown Hillside track. Uh, anything I need to plug? Not really. Check out Footy and Frothies. We've got our Super Coach uh, speculation show coming up this weekend. That will be up on their YouTube channel shortly. Barney, myself, uh, Danan, and GT will run through some of who we think might be the best picks for Rugby League Super Coach this year. And uh, if anyone wants to come on midweek shows with me uh, when I'm left in the lurch, leave some comments in the l- uh, leave some feedback in the comments below or on our Facebook. Uh, it might make this site less awkward. Sand down hillside. Rain's coming to Savo. Uh, if it hasn't started already in Melbourne by the time this is posted, currently a good four. Rail true, uh, rail three metres in fact, but uh, on the hillside track we now we get lovely big track there and nice long straight. By the end of the day, if it does get wet, it could potentially turn into last man standing, but we'll see how we go. Uh, seven race card. We've lost the two-year-old race. Apparently none of the scopy types, running types from the 2023 Magic Million sales wanted to race today. So no two-year-old race here. Uh, so it's been a, a glorious summer for Melbourne racing between that and the benchmark 64s. We've had to slog through on a Saturday. But anyway, start with the maiden. I, uh, I'm not going to start with the tip though because I don't have a lot to add here. If we do get into the wet range by the time this jumps, Real Shady did trial quite well in the wet. Uh, maybe on top for the sake of a tip, but definitely a watch and learn race. Could be some talent to come out of it. The second is a 1300 meter benchmark 64, two keepers for me. And at the price, I'm going to put Knuckle Bones on top half sister to Amaralina. A very nice debut. We sat wide at Mornington, rounded him up, ran away. It's quite lovely. Uh, you're getting $9 this morning again. Uh, I'm going to put it on top from Surprise Valley, who's going to be gate one uh, straight into the slot for the Waterhouse Spot team. You know what you're going to get. It's going to be whacking away in that last 100. And if there's no pace, which tends to happen in most Victorian racing, uh, it's going to be very hard to beat. The second, third, third is another benchmark 64 over the 1,000. Mark it right here. Amigo on top. Uh, nice form, nice prep. Resumed... A nice ride, but um, one with a little bit in hand. First up, Nolan takes over, gets the same draw. Uh, if not a, a lead, if it wants to. And I'm going to put it on top from uh, Starlacker. Very impressive last time out. Stag back, rounded up, ran away. Ten bucks. Uh, maybe one for those Quinella players out there. The fourth is the benchmark 73,000 metre race. Gosh, I could have used some help here, but uh, the fact that Border Leicester is going to be in front for at least some of this race has put it, made me put it on top, leading for Blake Shin. Um, nice enough win last time out. It is a big jump to 3,000, but has been over those distances, including in the Jericho before. So uh, now third up, I guess it's just getting out to its uh, its right range. From uh, a, Then you're looking at this Mooney Valley race lead up, and I struggled to split them. Apache Thunder had no luck in that race. Uh, I think maybe at five bucks, you can make that the danger here. Obviously, Redivo, the flashing light, out of the same race. The fifth, 400 meter benchmark, 64. We'll see what state this track it is by now. Uh, but another wheel is resuming here. A really nice horse. Uh, it's nice stuff last time out. The latest trial, uh, two rev up trials, and a big win in its third. Comes to town, I think probably wins here from McGarden who, if it had been wet, I half thought might be scratched, but uh, has some talent, gets D-Lane, and runs well here as well. The six is an 800-metre benchmark 64. I'm going to put this Japanese horse on top here. Nishino Crescent uh, did well, two very nice synthetic wins, came back, didn't have a great deal of luck, and was still good over a mile, straight to 1,800. Uh, it's going to run well here, and I'm going to put it on top. 
Uh, now let's make the danger. Maxi Bonnet a price who is flying. Um, was very nice to me last time out when I was on it at thirties. Is still twenties. Real line chaser and goes in next. Immediately comes to town off a nice win. Uh, ground saving ride again there, but looked nice enough and could have the upside heading into a sixty four as well. Last race of the day seventy at benchmark seventy grade thirteen hundred meters and. Punch Lane stays on top, rolls forward here. Very nice win. First up, will handle, uh, should handle the conditions, being so you think if it does get too wet and uh, has more upsiding, ends up on a Saturday at some point. Lang Park, quick back up from a nice win last week. Obvious danger, uh, that's the race for me. I thought Magnus Spin resuming, if it is wet, uh, absolute wet tracker, obviously looking for a little bit further, but nice kickoff point for it to come back and run well fresh. Progress Racing, uh, no, it's not. We'll get rid of them. For us, it is race three, number one, Amigo, my best on the card. And my value, race four, number two, uh, race two, number three, sorry, is uh, Knucklebones at around the $9 mark. Uh, join us on the Friday morning. We'll have our Saturday preview up. We've just got some stock standard Melbourne and Rose Hill, Flemington and Rose Hill this Saturday get stuck into stay tuned we might have something up for with a few tips for friday night as well thanks for tuning in subscribe leave some feedback below all that good stuff spread the word uh, that you can find this show twice a week every week for free and we'll be back to talk some more racing later in the week